Welcome back to Death Toll Racing. I'm under the Crown Vic today, and uh, this thing is a complete sleeper until you start it. Um, and we're going to fix that today by adding some Valvetronic cutout mufflers. All right, here are the mufflers. So when you buy them in a pair, they come built opposite of each other. And that's how you keep your exhaust symmetrical. They're pretty cool. So what happens is when you apply the power to the vacuum pump, it pulls that back. And then that does that. Ooh. When this is actuated, it just goes straight through, no muffler involved. So it should sound exactly the same as it did before. So we are going to install these things. So they're basically going to be the exact same as it was before, except it's either, it's either going to go through the muffler or, out, or, or bypass the muffler, but it's still going to be a dump under the middle of the car pointing at the rear wheels. So it's going to be tough fitting them in there like that, but we can get it done. Okay, I am not gonna lie, that is one of the ugliest parts I've welded in a while. <laughs> but it'll work. Uh, the welds are just oversized because they look like crap. Um, I don't have Trimix, um, so I tried using straight argon. That doesn't work, it was better with argon CO2. So anyway, it fits on there. Um, it's a little tricky to get on. Luckily that hole is slotted, um, so you can get it, you can slip it on there like that, hopefully. Once I get this part welded on there, it's not um, harder to get on. So now we're just gonna tack this on there. I got it pointing downhill a little bit because I have to make sure the rear end clears it when it drops. Doesn't look bad from the side, but from the back it sure looks low. I'm not super happy with the way this looks, um, but anyway, this is going to go on here. And I'm going to point it so that it hits the ground, aiming at the ground right where just behind the rear tire. That's, that's my goal. Um, I think I could have had it up higher and I could have limited, limited the rear end because I actually want to lower the car a little bit more since we're adjustable in the back. Um, anyway, because it sits kind of raked and I want it more level. All right, I got it all tacked up. I'm not super happy with it, but it will work. So, obviously this is in for there. It doesn't look too bad. I got them back on there, and that was, I didn't film it, because I figured I'm just bolting it on there. Um, they're the ugliest welds I think I've done in a really long time, but that's what happens when you don't have the right uh, welding gas. That is that. So now we have to plumb them up. So I have to hook, basically run a vacuum line to that guy um, to wherever we're going to run our vacuum pump, which is probably going to be in the trunk. So let's get wiring that thing up. Okay, so here is the vacuum pump um, that they give you. It is radio signaled. So it comes with a power cable, a remote, um, and an aluminum case. It's really nice for on or off. Um, and then they just have this, just put on your keys and move your fourth light. That's kind of clever. A sticker, some vacuum lines, the antenna that screws onto there, and then the T that will go between the two uh, mufflers. So, honest reviews always on this channel. I'm gonna tell you a couple things I don't like about this thing already. One, there's no way of mounting it. Um, you're gonna have to come up with your own way and maybe get some different screws for this and make tabs or brackets, um, or take the thing all the way apart, void the warranty, take the circuit board out, maybe drill some holes in the bottom and screw it on from the bottom and then put it back together once it's installed. Um, 
Or in my situation, you can just incorporate it into your really fancy subwoofer strap, uh, subwoofer mounting system that I have going on in the back of my car. So you'll see that in a minute. Um, the second thing I don't like about it is the cord is not actually being clamped by the clamp on this connector. So you, it is completely held in by either the crimp or the soldering, however they have that thing put together. Um, so I'm gonna fix that. It doesn't really matter if you're not pulling on it, but um, I would like to have that actually work. So we're just gonna put a little bit bigger of a cable in. Um, I'm not using the cigarette lighter part on it anyway, so I'd be cutting that off or, um, or rewiring it anyway. So I'm going to just repurpose a computer cord. So this is stranded wire, just like automotive wire. Uh, but <clears throat> after measuring this thing up, this will actually get clamped in there um, where, where this cable doesn't. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use that one. Uh, one conductor won't be used, but that's okay. So let's get going on fixing our connector end first, and then we'll start installing it, figure out how we're gonna route our hose. And we're gonna hope that they soldered this and didn't crimp it. Well, I don't know if I actually have to do that, take it apart, since it's not actually being held on there anyway. So these, you should just twist and pull out. It shouldn't have resistance, so there it goes. Okay, so we have a red and a black. Obviously, red is positive, and that's on terminal one. Black is on terminal two, so we'll have to keep that in mind. It is soldered, so that's good. So let's turn on our fancy-pancy soldering iron here. Turn it up to... 20, 300 should be good enough. You don't want to go too hot. This thing heats up extremely fast. Um, someone started a uh, company. This is literally all 3D printed uh, with some simple electronics and stuff in it. Um, a soldering gun has a really nice connection soldering tip. I actually really like this thing. It was something I actually found on Instagram, I believe. But they are on Amazon. There's, they're in my shopping or in my uh, Amazon store. Maybe 300 was a little soft, but that's okay. Now, it's always a good idea right now to double check that you actually put them on the right terminals because sometimes when you're fussing around with it, I did, when you're fussing around with it, it doesn't uh, do exactly what you thought. So you put this on with the screws not lined up and then twist so you shouldn't have to force it. Okay, here we are in my trunk. There's my nice subwoofer there. Here's my fancy subwoofer mounting system. And my plan is, I hope I have enough strap. Well, my plan was just to strap it right there. I'm trying to figure out if I want it upside down or right side up. I'll probably just put it right side up, just in case there's some sort of valve or something inside the pump it doesn't actually matter. Look at that, that's nothing but professional right there. All right, so it works. That's all it takes. That's supposed to open and close them, so we'll be able to actually check that from underneath. So let's go underneath, figure out where we need to run our vacuum line up to. Okay, so from under, straight up, it's slightly offset, but there's actually a plug, like a pass-through plug right there. So I'm just gonna use that. I'll just poke a hole in the middle of that. That's just plastic or rubber. Um, and that's how we'll run our vacuum lines. So what I ended up doing is uh, I just pushed it in, I ran the hose up, cut a hole in it, and then put it together from the top side since it pushes through from that side anyway. Um, and then my creative thing, if you see how it's going through here, it doesn't move because that's actually the Y. So I put the Y through the hole, uh, and then what, and then when I push the line on, it holds it in there, so it can't go anywhere. So then we hit our button, 
and we'll get to watch this thing work. <laughs> and it turns off, and then when you hit it, you can hear it actually release. Pretty cool. Okay, so here's open. Now here's closed. Has a good note. 